Dear students, I welcome you all to this class of MA English first year of Maulana Azad National Urdu University, Hyderabad. Today, we shall talk about tragic drama. We shall discuss various theories of tragedy, especially Aristotle's theory of tragedy. The topic is prescribed in the course Drama in English. As you all know, the word tragedy is often used as a synonym for disaster or accident. You can consider the example of headlines in the newspaper. When the newspaper says that five people died in the tragedy, it refers to some disaster or some accident. When we use the word tragedy as a type of drama, the students generally think that it is a drama with an unhappy ending where the hero or heroine of the play dies. Apart from this general understanding about tragedy, we should know that tragedy is a serious drama which deals with something important about human life. We find the earliest examples of tragedy in Greek drama. The origin of English tragedy is to be found in Greek tragedy. The Greek dramatists have a great influence on the English theatre. Even today, the translations of Greek dramas are performed in England. This is an evidence of their popularity. Greek tragedies were based on well-known stories. Gods and kings were the heroes of these dramas. The dramas were religious and didactic in nature, which means they had a moral lesson for the audience. Shocking and terrible scenes were not performed on stage. They were just reported by the chorus. Tragedy and comedy were not mixed. In other words, Greek tragedies were pure tragedies. We also call them classical tragedies. The number of characters was very less. The fate of the protagonist was responsible for his tragic downfall. Another feature of Greek tragedy is that the three unities of action, time and place were maintained. English dramatists followed some of these rules and violated the others. Three important thinkers have discussed the theory of tragedy. These three important thinkers are Aristotle, Chaucer and Hegel. First of all, we shall consider the theory of tragedy given by Aristotle. Aristotle was one of the philosophers of ancient Greece. His analysis of tragic plays became a guideline for the latter playwrights in the whole of Western civilization. For centuries, European playwrights have followed the ideals of Aristotle's model while writing a tragic play. Aristotle was not a dramatist. He did not invent the tragic drama. In fact, 
he used the examples from the works of famous Greek playwrights to explain his ideas about tragedy in the book known as Poetics. Poetics is the name of Aristotle's work. Like the Greek thinkers, Aristotle believed that tragedy was the highest form of drama. He defines tragedy. Now you can see the definition of tragedy given by Aristotle on the screen. He says, tragedy is the imitation of an action that is serious and also as having magnitude, complete in itself, in appropriate and pleasurable language, in a dramatic rather than narrative form, with incidents arousing sense of pity and fear, to accomplish a catharsis of these emotions. This is the definition of tragedy given by Aristotle. Let us consider the parts of this definition. First of all, it says that tragedy is an imitation of an action. Concentrate on the point action, which means that in tragedy events, incidents or plot is more important than characters because it is an imitation of an action and not an imitation of the people. Secondly, this action is of a serious nature. You cannot have a tragedy about something trivial. The subject of tragedy must be a significant issue on which serious deliberations can take place. So, the theme and ambience of tragedy is serious. The third point in the definition is that the action of tragedy which is serious in nature also has certain magnitude. Magnitude again refers to the relative importance of action. Here Aristotle wants to say that the action of tragedy must be an important thing. The fourth point of definition says that this action is complete in itself, which means it should have a beginning, a middle and an end. It should be complete in itself so that it does not require any outside help or explanation to complete the meaning of the play. The fifth point is that the language of tragedy should be appropriate and pleasurable. Appropriate in the sense that it suits the character and the ambience of the play. A king should speak like a king. A fool should speak like a fool. By pleasurable, Aristotle puts an emphasis on the literariness of language. The language should please the audience with its use of figures of speech and other literary devices. In short, the language of tragedy should be a source of aesthetic pleasure for the audience. The next point in the definition is that the action of tragedy should be presented in a dramatic form and not in the narrative form. Narration may be good for short stories and novels, but a drama should proceed through action. The dramatist should allow the characters or the actors to tell the story 
through their action on stage, narration should be avoided. It should be used only for the things which cannot be enacted on stage. The seventh feature of tragedy that we understand from Aristotle's definition is that the action of tragedy should include incidents which make the audience feel pity and fear. It should arouse a sense of pity and fear. Pity for the protagonist and fear for themselves. The presentation of tragedy should be such that the audience can correlate themselves with the tragic hero. They should feel sorry for the hero's sufferings and they should fear that the same can happen to them also. The eighth and last point of definition refers to the aim of tragedy that is catharsis. Catharsis is a Greek word which means purgation or purification. According to Aristotle, the tragedy should purify the feelings of audience. The events of, of tragedy should build up the emotions of pity and fear and through it move the audience morally and spiritually. So we have discussed eight features of tragedy based on the definition given by Aristotle. Apart from the definition, in his theory, Aristotle also talks about six main elements of tragedy. These six elements are plot, character, thought, diction, melody and spectacle. Plot is the most important element of tragedy. It is the soul of tragedy. Aristotle felt that action is more important than character. He was of opinion that plot of tragedy should follow the three unities, that is unity of action, unity of time and unity of place. In the definition itself, we have seen that the plot of tragedy should be complete in itself. It should have a beginning, a middle and an end. All the events included in a tragedy must be necessary. No irrelevant is event should be included in the plot. All the events must also be probable. Probable means believable. The second important feature of tragic plot is that it should have peripety and anagnosis. Peripety and anagnosis are the Greek words. Peripety means the change from one state of things to exactly opposite of it. In tragedy, it is called reversal of fortune. This could be something like the change from being rich to being poor. Somebody who was rich in the initial stage becomes poor by the close of drama, by the end of drama. That's where the tragedy happens. So it's a reversal of fortune. I was giving you the example. This could be something from being rich to being poor, from being powerful to being powerless, from being a ruler to being a beggar, like that. In short, it is a journey from happiness to misery, from happiness to sorrow. Anagnosis is another important feature of a tragic plot. Anagnosis is also known as discovery. It is a change from ignorance to knowledge. It often happens that the tragic hero is not aware of some important thing. Out of this ignorance, he commits some mistakes. 
after committing that mistake he comes to know about the truth so this is the discovery and this discovery comes at such a point in the plot that the hero cannot undo his mistakes he cannot rectify the mistakes for example in shakespeare's drama othello the hero kills the heroine and after killing her he comes to know that she was innocent this new discovery doubles the sorrow for him because he has killed some innocent person and it makes him pitiable for the audience because he did not know that she was innocent so anagnosis and peripety are the important features of a tragic plot aristotle believes that instead of a simple plot complex plot should be used for tragedy each character in a tragedy should have some relation to the plot it should also have a moral purpose and this moral purpose must be clear to the audience then the hero of tragedy he is the most important character he is the protagonist he should belong to high class he should be a noble a king a prince his tragedy should be such that it should affect the whole country the whole nation the hero of tragedy should be neither too good nor too bad because if he is too bad the audience cannot correlate with him they cannot sympathize with him and he should be good but with some hemarshia hemarshia is again a greek word it refers to the tragic flaw of a character it is the error of judgment so the hero of a tragedy should be a good person with some defect for instance shakespeare's tragic hero macbeth is a good soldier but he is over ambitious this over ambitiousness leads him to his tragedy it transforms him it changes him from a good loyal soldier to a murderer hemarshia or the tragic flaw is also important to make the audience feel that the character is responsible for his tragedy while discussing the features of greek tragedy we had talked that in greek tragedy the fate is responsible for tragedy but here in english dramas in english tragedies we find that the character is also responsible for his tragedy and this hemarshia is the point which makes us understand that even the character can be responsible for his tragedy if the character is responsible for his tragedy we should not blame the fate this understanding helps in achieving the aim of catharsis this understanding helps in arousing the sense of pity and fear the characters in tragedy should be true to their roles and positions which means that a king should behave like a king and a beggar should behave like a beggar apart from plot and character aristotle has also talked about thought thought as an element of tragedy thought is nothing but the theme 
the basic idea or the subject matter of the plot. The dramatist should choose the subject of a tragedy very carefully. He should be equally careful in his treatment to the selected subject. As said in the definition, an important and serious subject should be chosen for tragedy. Diction is the next element of tragedy. Here Aristotle talks about the language of tragedy. If thought deals with what is said, diction deals with how it is said. Again, as explained in the definition of tragedy, the language of tragedy should be appropriate and pleasurable. It should suit the characters and the situations. Moreover, it should provide aesthetic pleasure to the audience by including proper literary devices. Melody or song is the fifth element of tragedy. Aristotle had Greek tragedy in mind while giving his theory of tragedy. In the Greek tragedy, music played a significant role. The chorus also added to the musical quality of a play. Aristotle was of opinion that the dramatist should make judicious use of music in tragedy. Spectacle is the last element of tragedy as discussed by Aristotle. It refers to the staging of a play. The stage setting of a tragic play should also be in correspondence with the subject of the play. We have to agree that the stage setting has its own significance. Thus, under the heading Aristotle's theory of tragedy, we have discussed his definition of tragedy and the six elements of tragedy given by him. Dear students, for your convenience, I am repeating here Aristotle's definition of tragedy. He says, tragedy is the imitation of an action that is serious and also as having magnitude, complete in itself. In appropriate and pleasurable language, in a dramatic rather than narrative form, with incidents arousing a sense of pity and fear to accomplish a catharsis of these emotions. The six elements of tragedy discussed by Aristotle are plot, character, thought, diction, melody and spectacle. During this discussion, we have come across certain terms like catharsis, hemersia, peripety and anagnosis. I would like to remind you that catharsis or purification of feelings is the aim of tragedy. In our day to day lives, we rarely get a chance to pity or fear a thing or a person. So, tragedy provides us with that opportunity. As I told you in the beginning that apart from Aristotle, Chaucer and Hegel have also expressed their opinions about tragedy. I shall just briefly touch upon the key concepts explained by Chaucer and Hegel. Chaucer was of opinion that the hero of a tragedy should be a great man, a king, a noble, a prince. It is said that we do not feel bad to watch an ordinary man's sufferings. On the other hand, if a great hero suffers, our sense of pity and fear arises. But the critics disagree with this thought. 
we have the examples of modern dramatists who have written great tragedies with ordinary men as their heroes. Hegel is another thinker who is often quoted while talking about tragedy. According to Hegel, tragedy is based on a conflict. This conflict is between good and bad or right and wrong. This is not just a conflict between two persons. It is a conflict between two thoughts of the same person. The most popular example of this kind of conflict is between love and duty. The same person, the hero of a tragedy, has both these feelings, his love and his duty. And there is a conflict between his love and his duty. This conflict leads to the drama. Dear students, what we have explored today is the features of Greek tragedy, then Aristotle's theory of tragedy, then Chaucer's opinion about a tragic hero, and finally Hegel's concept of conflict in tragedy. You can read more about this topic from the books you are watching on your screen. The first is a background to the study of English literature by Brijesh Prasad. Another is a glossary of literary terms by M. H. Abrams. Dear students, you must have enjoyed our discussion of tragic drama. Let's meet some other time with some other interesting topic. Till then, goodbye. Thank you.